Hello, everyone, and welcome to this next segment on holistic immunity presented by the Organic India Institute for Healthy Conscious Living. Today, we have an incredible lineup of wellness experts from literally all over the world. We have Dr. Mark Cohen from Australia. We have um, Rachna Chachi from India. And we have Dr. Alejandro uh, Younger from Los Angeles, although originally from Uruguay. So we're going to be covering a full spectrum of wisdom internationally on this topic of lifestyle, how our lifestyle impacts our immunity. And so without further ado, let's dive right in. And some of the things I'm, I'm really excited to explore with you guys today are, are the impact of sleep. How much sleep do we really need to keep our immune system strong? Well, I, I'll go first. Um, I think that that that, that uh, concept of naming a certain amount of hours as as if everybody needs eight hours is way oversimplified, oversimplified and uh, erroneous because through different uh, times of your life, through different states of yourself being healthy or unhealthy, through different levels of activity and 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 performance, you need all kinds of different sleeps and and or hours of sleep. And it's not uh, so much the hours of sleep, but the depth and the quality of it. Mm. So um, that's that's what I have to say. Yeah, I'd like to just elaborate on that because um, I've, done, I've done quite a few studies on insomnia with yoga. In fact, we're just doing a study now on electromagnetic radiation and sleep. It's a double blind crossover trial. And what we look at is sleep architecture. So it's not just the time you spend asleep, it's sleep latency, how long it takes you to get to sleep, the quality of the sleep, slow wave, REM sleep. So it's the architecture of your sleep and then how refreshed are you when you wake up? And as Alejandro says, um, in different parts of your life, in different times, you can survive with less sleep or more sleep. So a simple prescription of hours is actually, you, you can get those hours by taking a sleeping tablet, but that sleeping tablet will reduce your slow wave sleep and actually change the architecture so you actually don't wake refreshed. So the amount you sleep, I mean, and sleep is such an incredibly important time for your brain to detoxify, for your body to um, eliminate the, uh, the work of the day and get, you know, clear out your digestion and your, you know, your brain literally shrinks and gets flooded with cerebrospinal fluid. So your, your neurons are getting detoxified, you're pro processing information. This is a really valuable time. So enhancing sleep isn't just about the time, it's about the quality and the depth. And there are many things we can do to enhance sleep and you know, sleep hygiene and all those things. Generally, drugs will put you to sleep, but they'll change the architecture so the sleep is not so satisfying. And then there's activities like just having a full day and um, you know, will improve your sleep. And some of the other research I've done is on um, uh, saunering and heat therapies. And you find if you have one of the benefits of a hot spring bathing or saunering is you sleep so much better. And I'm a big fan of per permaculture and Bill Mollison, who's the founder of permaculture says, when you get the basic things right, everything else seems to go right by itself. And sleep is one of the most basic things for all aspects of your health. Um, I, I'd just like to add, I uh, work with teenagers and I work with uh, working professionals who are extremely stressed out and the biggest link missing for them to have a good lifestyle and low disease activity and low inflammation levels uh, is uh, lack of sleep. Now, if you look at, uh, you know, for a moment, if you even look at these standardized guidelines, which have been revised now, uh, there are sleep doctors who have revised these after research saying that it's a seven to nine hours for adults to, uh, for sleeping. And I don't know any adult who sleeps for seven to nine hours except me, maybe. And... Um, there have been uh, cases of people following a healthy diet who are uh, exercising really well and uh, practicing everything physically healthy. Uh, but uh, four hours of sleep, sorry to say, but dropped dead with a heart attack. I, you know, I can, there was a CEO of SAP, uh, the most famous case uh, in India, uh, 42 years old, poster boy of good health, used to look like he was... 31 years old and he just dropped dead because and the only linkage was lack of sleep. If you look at teenagers today, 
most women that uh, most young girls are suffering with PCOS, uh, thyroid issues, acne, hair fall, obesity. They are sleeping less, which actually increases hunger cravings and uh, causes them to eat uh, uh, crave sweet foods, which is, you know, gets into a spiral itself just sleeping enough is going to get you to overcome your hormonal issues it's going to make you better in your grades and that is a that is the kind of counseling that i'm doing with a lot of parents uh, and uh, these teenagers so for somebody watching this right now and recognizing that they aren't getting enough sleep and they ought to especially at a time when they want to boost their immunity what's some simple easy to implement advice to really help them deepen the quality of their sleep Okay, so oh, there's, <laughs> we can all talk. <laughs> there's some, some very few simple and, and, and free things or almost free things that you can do. Go for a walk or a run before you go to sleep, uh, at least an hour before. Because if you, if you just finish exercise, it'll take a while to wind down. Also taking a warm bath or a warm shower, that alone helps so many people fall asleep uh, better than if they don't. Um, supplementing with magnesium is also a really simple thing that actually works. And then there's teas, like uh, some preparations of your Ayurvedic teas that really help, or, or teas from valerian root, things like that. So there are, oh, and, and then the basics, which is go to sleep when the sun comes down, <laughs> comes down and try to make your, your room dark without blue lights, without machinery and, and things like that. So I just elaborate on that again. Um, yeah, a hot bath is really effective. Um, going, have, having a sauna or you know, really ex, uh, expanding your tolerance of heat during the day will make you very tired. But um, you, you fall asleep best when your body temperature is lowering. And it's very hard to lower your body temperature when your feet are cold. So even if it's just a hot foot bath, and that way, when you're in the bed, you can shed the heat from your feet and as you're, it's, you fall asleep as your body temperature is dropping. So that thermoregulation, you know, if you're trying to go to bed with freezing feet, you know, you, you will take a while and you have to warm up your body. So that's an that's a, a important point, just thermoregulation. And the other one is you know, avoiding blue lights. And a really effective um, technique for that is getting blue tack. And just getting a blob of blue tack and putting on any blue LED light on your air conditioner or on your, you know, your light switch and just blocking out those you know, LED lights. But also exposure to electromagnetic radiation. So we've, I've just done a, a double blind crossover study. The, we haven't published the results yet, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But just, um, and we just we looked at baby monitors. So it was 2.45 gigahertz, which is the wireless phone radiation or a baby monitor radiation. And we, we've actually found a very significant change in sleep and sleep quality just by being exposed to that electromagnetic radiation. So not having a wireless phone, not having your iPhone, or if you have your iPhone or your, or your mobile phone, put it on um, airplane mode, turning off your Wi-Fi routers and giving yourself a, um, a chance to actually tune into the nat natural background radiation and not be exposed to um, external radiation. And, and as Alejandro says, um, external light can be really powerful. Well, it covers a whole spectrum. Russia, anything you want to add to that? Yes, I'd like to say, you know, I'd like to add to what Mark said. You need to calm down your body temperature. And the best way to calm down your body temperature is uh, breath work. Uh, Continue daily breath work. Why are we unable to sleep? Or uh, why do we get up after three hours of good sleep, even if we go off to sleep? It's because our mind is not calm. Uh, it's continuously in an agitated state. The moment you... Uh, day after day, uh, do breath work, deep breathing. Uh, if you don't have time during the day, make sure you eat dinner early enough, at least three hours before you go to sleep. So if you're sleeping at 10 p.m., then by 7 p.m., your dinner should be done. And uh, just before sleeping, take a hot cup of chamomile tea uh, with some raw organic honey, which has natural minerals and probiotics and do some simple deep breathing exercises uh, for five to seven minutes. You will not be able to read seven minutes. You, your eyes are going to start shutting. And the moment your brain starts calming down, the length of and quality of your sleep is going to be better. So remember that women with hormonal issues and stressed out working professionals 
both have brain agitation and they wake up in the middle of the night even if their phones are off so to for us to get continued sleep the mind needs to be uh, extremely calm and Wonderful. breath work really and can i just add here it's not a bad thing occasionally to not sleep if you're really engaged in the moment and you you know you're at a party you want to dance all night or you want to make love all night or you've got a really bad assignment you know full on at work and you're fully engaged in it you know to do an all nighter is not a tragedy as long as you're mentally engaged doing an all night awake is a tragedy if you're lying in bed trying to get to sleep and you're worrying about it but if you're fully engaged in what you're doing just like um you know it's a, it's not a bad thing to miss a night of sleep but then you'll catch up you'll actually pay back that sleep debt in future nights so you need good quality sleep afterwards I just want to make and what, and, mm. and what Rajna said about not going to sleep while you're digesting, you know, yeah. eating a big meal and then going to bed, it's kind of the worst thing you can do because your body will be so busy digesting, it won't be able to turn the deep sleep part of sleep. Mm -hmm. 